Hello again and a warm welcome back to the channel if you're an existing subscriber and a very warm welcome if this is your first time watching one of my videos. Um, I don't really have an awful lot for you this week, it's uh, Wednesday today and I haven't uploaded for four or five days. I've been messing about with my own stuff, I've got so many cameras as I have, I've lost count now, it was over 450 the last time I checked. Um, and lenses, I don't even bother counting those anymore. So I've just been messing about. I've got the um, bit of an update video for you, really, just what's going on and what I'm thinking about at the moment. I've got the Pentax 6.7 here. Um, been working fine since I did the video about the shutter issues and the mirror issues. I've got the 55 3.5 on it, and it's loaded with uh, my second roll of the Shanghai GP3 220 film, which I got in the 100 ISO which is really quite slow and not suited ideally to this beast with its big flappy mirror and huge shutter. This one does have mirror lockup, so I'll definitely try and use that, but I haven't managed to shoot this yet. I did shoot the first roll and developed it, and I was quite disappointed. Um, the plastic backing that the emulsion sits on is very, very curly. It's very hard to try and keep it flat. And it's even worse when you cut it down into the smaller sections for filing. It just wants to curl. And overall, I'd say I paid £11 for one roll and um, two rolls of HP5 in 120 would have cost me the same. And HP5 is a good two or three tiers higher in terms of quality than the, the, the Shanghai GP stuff is. Um, my other concern about it is, is obviously with the lockdown in Shanghai, whether they're still producing the film, whether they're still able to ship film out and get some supplies in to make film uh, i don't know um but it's certainly for me it, from what i've seen so far it's not going to replace my favorite which is hp5 um you don't need to modify these it's just a couple of things to change like the frame counter the little lever on the side and change the pressure plate on the back and it'll shoot 220 unlike the 645 but 100 iso speed in the uk is too slow to be honest and it does benefit from a bit of overexposure so you could be shooting at 50 or 25 iso which is you know you try shooting a pentax 67 at iso 25 even on a tripod with a mirror locked up you still get vibration it's a, it's a nightmare other than that i'm just playing around cleaning stuff i've been working quite a lot with the 5d mark ii getting to know that camera not impressed with the video out of it so i'm still using the phone um I do have some extra mount adapters for it. I have an FD one now, for example, to EF. And I've also changed the screen. I bought a new screen, for, well, not new, but second-hand screen, which is this Screen S, which is apparently better for manual focusing. So that's certainly going to help with getting the uh, the lens or the, uh, the the vintage manual lenses tested, you know, on a digital camera. I'd like to get an A7, but I think it's worth waiting and getting an A7 too. I've looked at the new Canons. I know the R10 and R7 have come out this week, but at the price that they're going for, I'd, I'd sooner go and buy 20 or 30 different other cameras than waste money on those. And then you've got to buy RF lenses. And No, I think the A7 is probably the one I'm going to settle on eventually. Um, but I am a Canon shooter. I have L glass, so it made sense to buy the 5D Mark II. Now, the big thing I'm thinking about doing is in the last week I've been researching and I've come across quite a lot of um, people that take or are just starting in analog photography. My main sort of audience is aged between 18 and 34. I'm 60 and there's not many people my age who watch my channel. The bulk of them are in that 18 to 34 group. And there's a lot of them who photography isn't their thing. They don't really understand cameras. They don't have all that technical mumbo jumbo holding them back. They just go out and take some of them amazing photographs. So if you sort of fall into that category anywhere in the world, worldwide, I'd like to do almost like a, a collab. I'd like to feature you on my channel because I've seen people, I come across one yesterday, he's been doing YouTube for 10 years, and his videos get less views than mine do. And he is a really, really good photographer, but he knows nothing about cameras. He just takes pictures, gets them developed, and the pictures, quite honestly, are knockout. 
photography isn't his main thing. His channel's more of a, a, a blog or a vlog or whatever you call them. But if you fit into that category, if you're a, a first time or a, you know only been shooting film for a year or two, um, but you have a really good eye or you think you have a really good eye, please drop me a line at the photographer's bag at gmail.com. Um, we'll have a discussion over email and see whether I can feature you as like a featured photographer of the month or an up and coming photographer or something like along those sort of lines. You know, yes, hopefully I'll get views out of it, but then you'll also get um, seen by a larger audience than what you've already got. You know, 10 years and 140 odd subscribers is, 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 is it's not, it's not very motivating. And where I see talent, I'd like to, um, promote it to a wider audience i know instagram and things like that do as well but i think also for my subscribers and people who watch my video it would be nice to see youngsters getting into film everyone younger than me is a youngster so if you're in your 40s don't think i'm di disallowing you or whatever but um it's nice to see young people particularly in that 18 to 34 group and possibly even younger but i'm just saying adults really but um you know, if you fit into that category and, you know, just drop me a line and uh, you know, see what your work's like and um, maybe then take things from there. Um, there's no money involved. It's just a simple case of I don't want paying. I'm not going to pay you, but I just want to give young photographers that I think have got some great potential and they are out there because I've found about 10 of them this week. And, and yeah, I can give them a bit of a boost. I have emailed all the ones that I've found so far, but this is just a general plea that uh, if that's something that appeals to you, then uh, like I say, please drop me a line. That's about all I have for you at the moment. I've got some more gear stuff coming up. I'm trying to sort out cameras that I've covered and cameras that I haven't covered. And there's still a load that I haven't yet covered. Um, and I've got an awful lot of repair work on as well kind of a bit snowed under with the repair and maintenance of my own gear and I have got some external stuff that's come in um, for repair and overhaul as well. So yeah, I'm keeping busy, but it's very difficult at the moment to make completed videos. Um, it takes a lot of work to shoot all the different bits of a video and I'm not a hot editor at all. I've got a couple of editing programs I'm playing around with. I don't use computers because I don't particularly like them. And uh, you know my editing skills and background music and you know my cut scenes and all that sort of stuff is going to be really really amateurish but um i'd like to get some you know this is a camera this is a sample roll these are the pictures it shot you know like most other youtubers do maybe with some nice mellow sort of music in the background but at the moment i just haven't got the time to sit down and do that anyway thanks for listening to an old man rambling on like I say, if you uh, if you think you're young and gifted, and particularly from anywhere around the world, as I've seen a couple of photographers in Africa, where it must be really difficult to get hold of film and developer, and even to get hold of a camera, um, an old film camera. And some of the work they've been producing has been absolutely amazing. I know there's viewers all over the world, so like I say, if it's something that appeals, drop me a line. Thanks for listening. Hope you're all doing well. Keep safe. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and all that usual YouTube rubbish. Um, I'll put all that at the end. A lot of people put it at the beginning, but I don't believe in that. You can't like something if you haven't seen it. It doesn't make sense to me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.